a lot of events. And um, when I go to these fairs and everything, what I'm amazed at is how many people say, well, you know, I, I have an uncle who is who has trouble reading print, and he just kind of thought he'd never be able to read again, and that was the end of it. Now here, here are you guys. We didn't know you existed. You can't believe how many people are affected by uh, the inability to read print for whatever reason, um, whether it's they're getting older and their eyesight is failing, whether it's dyslexia, MS. There are a variety of conditions people don't even think about. Um, you know, that have to do with, with uh, the inability to read print. So, um, anyway, Audio Reader serves Kansas and Missouri, and we're serving, they're serving more and more people all the time, and it's just a very exciting thing. So, and the Lions have been a big part of, um, of helping that process. So, it's my pleasure to introduce Audio Reader's Development Director, Beth McKenzie. Thank you. Yeah. So. I'm going to try not to step on Marley. <laughs> <laughs> She'll get up, won't you? There you go. Yeah, she's, so. good. <laughs> she's good. Thank you. So um, I know that we've come to talk to your club before. So Audio Reader does a 24-7 closed circuit broadcast for people to listen to a stream of news, entertainment, and information. We also have a telephone reader program, which the Kansas Lions actually put the money forward to create that several years ago. And it is um, really revolutionary. And we have places all over the country that are copying that for their communities and their information services. It's a on-demand service. So like Kim was saying, she just um, is using it on her Google Home so you can call in or use a smart speaker or something like that and get the exact news that you're interested in. So if you, like my grandparents retired to the Ozarks and they still take the paper from Colby and Northwest Kansas because that's where they were from and they grew up and they want to know honestly who's died that they knew, <laughs> you know, and yeah. that kind of a thing. Yeah. But, um, so this would be the way that they could get that information if they're no longer able to read standard print. So um, my grandparents do have email and use computer, but it's very basic and they call me regularly because something came up that, you know, they don't know if it's a virus or they don't know how to get off their computer. Um, so a lot of our listeners just are not comfortable, even though there's technology out there that can help with those things. Um, and a lot of our listeners are very rural, and so they don't have a good internet signal to be able to download things or stream things like that. So we're able to come in with like boosted antenna signals and things like that so that they can use either the broadcast or the call-in service. We're also on streaming so you can get on like podcasts and choose what you want and listen to those things. Um, Kim did a show back in the 90s, and so we still have people doing those that it would be like a variety hour or a home improvement mm -hmm. hour or something like that. And then there's just the straight Kansas City Star or Southeast Kansas newspapers, Western Kansas newspapers. So it's really exciting and I really love working there because you know we are able to serve so many people for such an efficient way. We have three full-time staff and probably six or seven part-time staff, either quarter time or 50% time. And with that, we're able to serve all of Kansas and the western half of Missouri. And then we go from about St. Joe down to, when you get into the Ozarks, it gets tricky because the signal technically would go this far, but because of the mountains and stuff, then it drops off closer. But um, south of the Springfield and like, Nevada in that area in Missouri so like pretty much that western strip so um, we have 450 active volunteers in Kansas and Missouri which like, I say that a lot but when I stop and really get my head around how many people that is like that's almost the size of my high school you know and so um, people that come in to read people that read from home and people that do events um, like Kim was saying we do a lot of health fairs and senior fairs just to try to get the word out and let people know what we do. Our biggest growing population is not people who identify as blind or visually impaired. It is people who have age-related 
diseases, illnesses that are causing them to lose their sight. But if you've been sighted until you know your 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, then you don't identify if they say, oh, this is a service for blind and visually impaired. They'll say, well, that's not me. You know, I have macular degeneration. So, in, or diabetic retinopathy. We have a lot of people, sadly, in their 40s and 50s who are losing their vision due to complications from diabetes, which, as you know, is one of the lion's missions and goals to help support along with the Knights of the Blind. So we see a lot of people that, you know, it's, they don't identify. So when we're offering services, they don't think, oh, I should sign up for that. Um, so we try to spread the word and let people know that it's anyone who can't reprint. We have a lady in Gerard that she has MS and she was a kindergarten teacher and um, it just got too much that she's not able to hold a book or a tablet and so she listens to audio reader and she loves it and we have a lady from Topeka that um, she does the grocery ads most of your readers as Kim can tell you when I try to email her things <laughs> um, the they will readers. only read print right they won't read if it's an image or a PDF or something um, and some of them even with print if it's formatted certain ways it's really hard mm -hmm. to understand yeah, and grocery so, ads are a prime example of that yeah so they I can just, just pull up my phone and it will get the Hy-Vee or Dylan's app and tell me what's on sale or what the coupons are um, but to try to do that and we as staff we go through these things so that we can understand if it's working or not and one of the things that we found was our website when you go to the audio reader website in this really tiny print across the top of the page that I had honestly looked at a hundred times but never registered it says because KU is where we are located so we have a KU website and so it says log into my KU go here go and it's like this tiny little thing for any KU employee to be able to log in and edit the website if you're using a reader <laughs> that's the first thing that you click on so we were having all these listeners say I'm trying to get to your stream or your podcast yeah. but it's telling me I have to log in and if you couldn't see what that was you know you would know to just skip 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 to get to the actual content yeah. and so you know we would have to explain to the IT department why you know this isn't an accessible website and maybe put those things in a menu or down at the bottom or something so you know we're practicing these things and but yeah, so our lady in Topeka, she uh, loves the grocery ads, and um, we did a video to kind of showcase what we do and let people see, you know, listeners and volunteers. And when we did it, she, like we have a listener who's reading the Hy-Vee ad, and then you see Kayleen in Hy-Vee, and they have a worker that helps her shop. So she goes and she records what she wants and goes to Hy-Vee and says, well, you know, these apples are on sale or, you know, the chicken's on sale or whatever. And then she asks one of their workers and they help her around the store. And Hy-Vee had no idea that they did that. And they're like, C can we use your video for our commercial? <laughs> because they thought that was so cool that, you know, between this nonprofit service and this, you know, giant corporate entity that they were helping, you know, people be able to live independent lives. So <clears throat> um, that was really exciting for us. So um, our hope is that maybe Hy-Vee will pay us for <laughs> using that so um, but yeah it's a really exciting place to be we have people that are calling in regularly and either complaining because you know you always hear when it goes wrong <laughs> you know yeah. and so yeah. uh, one Friday I was helping cover the front desk for a coworker who had a sick child and I didn't know how to upload the new information and so um, probably within 30 minutes I had seven calls for people that wanted to know you know where the Walmart ad was because it you know publishes on Friday in Lawrence and so um, we know when things aren't working you know how many people are listening to that um, but you know we also have people that you know will just tell us when we talk to them or to their family members you know one lady told me you know she's like you gave us our mom back you know and she felt so closed off and wasn't able to engage and was you know, really proud and, you know, had been, like you were saying, somebody's still out breaking water and trying to feed animals and get things done. And, you know, a lot of people in Kansas and Missouri are very independent and grew up very rural. And so having to move into town, into assisted living or a nursing home or something, 
and then having to ask somebody to just tell you what's going on in their community or the information about their grandkids playing sports or something like that, then we're able to let them do that on their own time and in their own way. So that's a really nice feeling. Um, recently, the University of Kansas is undergoing a oh, several yes. billion dollar budget cut. <laughs> yeah. And so they've decided that um, they will continue in-kind support for Audio Reader, but they are dropping their direct financial contribution which is more than half of our annual budget. Um, they have provided for all of our um, employee salary and fringe um, for 47 years. And so that's a huge change and it was very unexpected. Um, and part of the reasoning is that as they are seeing, you know, tuition and enrollment rates and things like that fluctuate, that they are focusing on where do students want their dollars to go and since we were a nonprofit service, you know, we're not really part of the student community. We have a lot of student workers. And then if students have, you know, reason to use our services, then they're quite familiar. Um, but the general university, you know, we're not academic. Um, and so they're cutting several programs that are not academic units. So we still have a lot of support from them. We have, you know, I don't even know how many studios in our building um, and all of that equipment and the HR and IT and facilities and maintenance and utilities bills and all of that, you know, that's several hundred thousand dollars worth of support, um, but it's, you know, it's still a drastic change for us. So we don't know what that's going to look like. But what we do know is that since that announcement has happened, you know, we're having more and more people reach out to us to ask how they can help, which is a really good feeling. And you know we serve communities all across the state um, and into Missouri, and for 47 years we've never had to go into the communities and ask for local funding. You know, we the Lions are big supporters and a few foundations and family trusts and things like that. But um, you know, for example, we have a large listener population in Miami County, and um, there's a family there that actually donated several hundred thousand dollars to do the building at KU when it had been sitting empty for several years. Um, and since then, we've never gone back to Miami County and asked for any additional funding because we didn't have to. But now we're going into those communities, you know, going into Wichita and, you know, Western Kansas and Springfield and places, you know, to say, we've been serving you. This is how many listeners we have in your area, you know, and to try to get support from more local communities. So, so far it's working and it's, you know, helping, but it's still, you know, quite a shock and, and you know, something that we're trying to figure out, you know, how will this look different? Um, and it's like, I mean, not funny, but, um, you know, when we talked to listeners, um, one of our listeners was the director of recreational services at KU for several decades and she lost her sight in a water skiing accident um, when she was in her 40s. And, um, you know, she talks about how, you know, you just decide or you realize it's not... I can't do it, I have to, it's I have to do it different. And so you just, you know, find a way. Um, and so just like Kim, she's very professional and she's very <laughs> engaged in her community and a um, really inspiring person. Um, and so it's funny that we're now saying that same message that Mary's been saying, you know, about using our services is, you know, we, we know it'll look different, you know, but we have a lot of support and so we don't anticipate going anywhere. Um, we just don't know how to make that transition yet. So that's what we're currently working on and trying to bridge that gap of just over $300,000. So um, we are, um, so Audio Reader, we've had like maybe one grant that we would apply for annually. And so that's an opportunity that, again, we never had to apply. And so now that we do, we're you know doing some of those things. Um, and then as Kim said, we're still going out into communities because a lot of people, if you don't have a reason to be aware of it, you know, then you are not aware of it. And so to let more and more people know, especially those, like I said, that have, you know, family member or friend that do have either, you know, like diabetic or age related um, vision illnesses. And then, um, let's see. Your, how about your sale in the hall? Oh, yes. So um, we have one of our major fundraisers is in uh, September, and it's called For Your Ears Only. 
and it is a audio equipment and record sale. So we have speakers and stereos and um, luckily for us, vinyl is very popular again for music enthusiasts. So um, it starts at like six o'clock on a Friday evening and we will have people lined up. I'm not kidding you, by three o'clock in the afternoon, like they're waiting for tickets to something. And so they'll sit outside and wait to be the first ones in to get the best selection for records. And, and it's hot in the middle of September, you know, it's still summertime and they'll sit out there in the direct sun for hours just waiting to get in, which is really neat. But yeah, so we, you know, it's really maybe seven hours. We're open Friday night and Saturday um, and we sell those things. So we'll send information to you guys if you have equipment or records or things like that. Um, like the Leavenworth Club, they have a regular drop site. And so a couple of their guys, maybe once a month, all year long, bring stuff down to us that they'll collect just from Leavenworth and Lansing communities, um, just as an extra way for them to help. Um, and you know, I think that the couple of guys that do it, it's to get away from their wives because they're always <laughs> like, no, we'll help unload that, we'll help do that. Do you want us to make the coffee? Do you need us to take this anywhere? <laughs> so we always tease them that, you know, that they just wanted a reason to, you know, get away from home for a while. But it's a really fun event, so if you guys are um, interested then, we will definitely let you know. And then, yeah. When I go to garage sales, I always tell them about that, but can you be, after the meeting, you give me a contact person? Yeah. And I'll pass out your names. Yes. Musical instruments, too. <laughs> yeah, we do uh, musical instruments, um, which I always get the instruments, and there's stuff that like, I have no idea what this thing is. And um, so I'm searching <laughs> online or trying to find, like, we have this good about that. thing from South America, <laughs> and it was made from, like, an armadillo shell, and oh. it was like a double strained little, I had no idea what it was. Um, and then, like last year we had like what looked like cellos, but like not quite. And so we're all kind of like, they're in good shape, but I have no idea how much they're worth, if they were $10 or $1,000 or, and so one of our coworkers was like, oh, I know a guy that plays in this Baroque music group. And so the guy came down to price them for us and was immediately like, I will give you $700 right now, like for each of them. And I was like, okay. And then later, of course, found out they were worth a lot more than that. But <laughs> <you know? laughs> um, I should have known when somebody's willing to, you know, yeah, jump on it like that, then it's probably worth more. But, you know, so you that's still. Much take, like anything audio related? Mm -hmm. kind of yeah. Musical or like surround sound or mm -hmm. anything? Yeah, there's certain stuff like uh, that does just doesn't sell um, that like VHS, you know, right. players like that. Um, for a long time, we didn't take eight trap or cassettes, but those are popular again. So no, like that. yeah, um, and so in some stuff it can be like slightly damaged, and we have engineers <laughs> that can fix it. Um, but some of the stuff we get, like we literally had a set of speakers that had like. A pack rat living in them oh and so no. like they yeah. came in and dropped it off and oh man and I'm sure like when they bought them you know in like the, the late 70s it was a very expensive set of speakers but you know 30 some years later it was not worth much anyway and then you know we set them down and then like heard it moving <laughs> and we're all kind of looking around like oh my god do you do you hear that <laughs> and so then when the girl went to pick it up and like felt it or I didn't handle that but um so some of those things are immediately recycled um but for the most part it's you know things that are in good workable condition and gently used so yeah so yeah it's okay so now I, I want this week's grocery ads from price shop originally how do i get that done um, so either, like there's a schedule that you could turn on the broadcast and it will be on for your area. And so your price shopper ad might not be the same as someone in Wichita, but they, it's on at the same time. And then you can do the call-in service where you would call into a telephone reader Sorry. and say, you know, I want this area, grocery ads, and then it, it's an alphabetical order for whatever stores are available in your area. So you, would, you have to have that special equipment in your house, correct? No, no, no that television oh, is just a call-in program. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, and so there's a thing when it first comes on that says, you know, like, 
do you attest that you are, you know, have some sort of, you know, blind visual impaired or unable to read standard print? Um, and like I said, we're trying to tell people that that does not mean that you have to be born blind, that that can be anyone that has trouble reading. So if I take my contacts out, I am completely unable to read, you know, standard print. So if I were in a situation where I didn't have access to those, you know, then I would use that, you know, audio service as well. But since I do have access then, um, but that's how we are able to promote so many different things. And most people listen to the same things, and so you would know, like, you know, like Kim could probably tell me one, but like this menu would be, you yeah, dial this number, and then like, it's you, know, you press, yeah, and I used one to, seven I used, two seven, and that yeah, gets you to. I IVF. exclusively use telephone reader. I, yeah. I almost never use anything but telephone reader because it's so easy to manipulate. <laughs> yeah, you know, you can just do it whenever and whenever, wherever you want to. Yeah. And Kim, how did you get associated with audio reader? Um, well, I started out as a student at Baker University, and I heard about it and, and uh, got a little box in my dorm room way back when Janet Wellish was director. That was many years ago, like 25, 30 years ago. And uh, then I got to KU, and uh, I knew that the service was on campus, and I began uh, inquiring about it, and at first I needed my radio changed, and uh, when Lori came to do that, I said, well, can I volunteer there? And she said, sure. And so I began to volunteer at Audio Reader, and it's just been a remarkable, remarkable relationship ever since. And so uh, I guess I, I started listening to Audio Reader back in maybe 85, 86, and have been active at Audio Reader ever since that time. And how did you get connected with John Trinkle? Uh, John Trinkle, uh, that was a direct connection through Audio Reader. Um, I needed someone to help me read my doctoral dissertation. So, you know, you'd write something and then someone would, I, you know, I would type it and I didn't have access to a braille embosser or anything like that at the time. So I'd type it and then I wouldn't know if my typing looked right or if it was reading correctly. So uh, I needed someone to help me do that. And uh, Diana Frederick, who worked there at uh, Audio Reader at the time, put me in touch with John Trinkle and John read my dissertation to me and when I graduated from KU back in 99 and moved back to Overland Park, I was looking for a way to be active in Lions and um, I asked Diana back at Audio Reader, do any of the Audio Reader volunteers live in Overland Park and, you know, attend Lions and they, you know, she said, sure, John Trinkle does and so uh, that's how I got involved with Prairie Village and then ultimately with you guys, so. I have Audio Reader to thank for being a lion. And then so. what do you do on, uh, you're serving on the board now. Correct. So, mm -hmm. so what all does that involve? It uh, involves or as, as much or as little as, as a board member would like to do. Um, I like to get involved in it, so um, I work at uh, some of the events that go on. A lot of the times, uh, because of my driving limitations, I uh, do a lot of phone work. So calling and thanking donors, um, calling restaurants and asking them about doing give back nights, um, you know, all new kinds listeners. of new listeners, you know, just any anything that has to do with the phone, uh, I can do it and I'm involved in that. So it's an honor to be a part of Audio Reader. So she can also, like, she'll braille our documents for, yeah. you know, other um, members of our yeah. committee and then, um, but also it's, information for us like I said we always try to check in and make sure things are working and so um, you know having something that can tell us like you know, like the website thing or um, so we uh, last year had you know paid for this got a grant for this video to be produced that shows listeners and volunteers and you know it's a really good feel good story and then Kim was like yeah this sounds great and then all of us were like Oh, like, <laughs> we don't know we, what's happening on the video. We didn't have it described yet, you know, and um, good thing we had only sent it out to our board so far. So, um, but things like that where they, you know, she was able to tell us, um, you know, what's working or what's not working and um, calling in and tr testing things out, helping us with stuff like that. So um, we, we have a lot of um, services that we'll do like the, dining in the dark um, and those kinds of things. And, um, you know, when we talk to a lot of our listeners, you know, the thing is very important that, you know, we're not being just reductive and we're not being, you know, exploiting anyone or, 
um, we're trying to always present our listeners, you know, in the most respectful way, um, rather than trying to, you know, use like pity or, you know, oh, because a lot of people when they talk to us, they think of like, oh, this poor little old blind lady that can't do anything, you know, and for the most part, even, you know, the little old blind ladies are quite capable, you know, and that's what we're always trying to, to work on is, you know, showing that and having that be part of our image. Um, and then the, we also do audio description, um, which is for like the arts, videos, plays, things like that. Um, and so we have different high schools and places like that that, um, for example, the Lawrence High School was using a series of videos for their physics courses. Um, and of course, you know, those don't come with description. And so uh, we described those for a couple of students um, who were blind. Um, and now one of them is actually a KU student and using us similar as Kim did for some of his projects as a college student. Um, you know, but so first of all, we have to find a volunteer that understands physics well enough to explain, you know, what's happening. Um, so that's always kind of fun. And, you know, sometimes the people who understand physics and chemistry and mathematics really well are not the best at explaining no, that <laughs> to other people. <laughs> like, it's a really, like, unique teacher that can both understand and comprehend you know these really more advanced calculus and things like that but also explain it to a non-sighted high school age learner um, so we're trying to match volunteers in that way we do a lot with the different theaters um, so i think it's section 508 um, is you know when they say that interpreter services will be provided for you and we tend to think of that as signing and Spanish and those things but that also includes audio description um, and so you know sort of back in the 80s the the deaf community you know got very um, advocate for themselves and then you know we had a lot of things through the 90s and early 2000s with the Spanish-speaking populations and this and so now the um, blind and visually impaired populations you know say like hey like you know, we should have equal access as well. And so your cable program, your movie theaters, your live theaters, um, all of those things are required by law to provide interpretation. Um, and that includes the audio description. And so we'll have places that will call us and say, you know, hey, one of our, you know, season ticket holders, you know, has lost their sight and they want this described and we don't know what that means and somebody said you can do it and so you know we'll work out an agreement with them you know to do that for them so that their constituents can enjoy that as well um, so like for theater or movies we'll describe physical activity the set the costumes the things that um, you can't you know hear happening and then you know it's really interesting I've learned a lot about theater just you know, trying it out, just stuff that I always assumed I knew what was happening and then learned a lot more. So that's been very interesting as well. John did theater. Oh, John really? Trinkle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, and if you guys know John Burns, who's the oh, district yes. president this year, he's a, um, an active volunteer. And so he is one that does it from his home and goes straight on to Telephone Reader. Um, and so, and he comes and works our sale every year. He's our Saturday morning cashier guy, so you can come and check him out and his volunteering glory so <laughs> as long as he doesn't have to hear you he's fine right? yeah <laughs> yeah he's our district yeah you know how many people in delta county use these services i don't know off the top of my head and and it's really hard for us to quantify one because um like i can tell you how many radios we have out in the area um, and then we can tell you how many people call in on telephone reader but the people who use the streaming service, which are usually more of our younger listeners, um, I mean, we don't, if they go through our website, we can track it, but if they go through like the smart speakers or, you know, something like that, then, you know, we don't have the analytics for someone else's stream. So, um, but we estimate, you know, anywhere from seven to 10,000 listeners a day. Um, so I know that we have, I wanna say we average like 40, some calls from the Kansas greater Kansas City area for telephone reader a day and then the average person is listening for about 20 minutes um, and so you know we kind of take that and extrapolate it out uh, the Kansas City Star is by far our most popular um,
call-in service for this area. And then um, second to just general Kansas City Star news is grocery store ads and then obituaries. Um, when we do listener surveys, like everything else, it's always like the same number of people who call in and say that they hate the obituaries are the same that call and say, they love the obituaries <laughs> and yeah. so you know like people will be like this is so dumb why do you have these this is horrible nobody wants to hear about dead people and other people are like oh thank you so much for having the obituaries we yeah. love knowing this and so yeah you know you can't please everyone <laughs> so, um, Beth, yeah. do you or did you have some actual experience with like describing a, what what you call it, describing a play or a, mm -hmm. Uh, can you give us just a, uh, you know, I know this put me on the spot maybe, but just a brief, uh, pick a movie that you did or a, a Starlight oh, sort of sure. thing, and just maybe for a minute, tell us how that works. Yeah, so, um, and it can even just be pictures, you know, if you're reading an article or a book or something okay. like well, that. Or the museum, art museum. Yeah. Can, um, you, can you actually repeat something you've done? So, oh, sure. So so if we were going to describe the lion's banner, you know, over here, then um, we, I don't, maybe, Kim, if nobody's ever described the banner no, for you. Haven't. Um, haven't. You know, so I would say Yay. that, you know, it's a large um, purple banner. Um, and then uh, we would try ahead of time to estimate, like, how many feet, you know, this is. Uh, we have our people try to watch it first before they describe so they know kind of what's coming and they time it so that we're not speaking over like what's actually being said. So you would say, you know, it's purple and it has gold trim with gold fringe on the bottom. And there are, there's a large lion's emblem in the middle that has two lion heads facing left or right and a big L in the center that says Lions Club around it. Wow. Across the top are three like rectangular gold patches and they're large patches and one says Home Club District Governor 17 AE and then there's some Jim something, 91, 92, I can't read his name. Jim And then the middle one says Home Club District Governor 17K7 was Neil K. Nichols, 2007, 2008. And then the patch on the right is Home Club District Governor 17AE. And that's in very pretty cursive, so I can't read it from here. Frank somebody? Frank Frank Okay, right. and that was 1971-72, so this club has a strong history. So then it says so Host great. Lions Club, Overland Park, Kansas, and there's a 45-year club pin, or patch, excuse me. And then on the left side is the um, Lions Center International, Lions Club International Foundation, Melvin Jones Fellowship patch, and that's gold with the purple lions emblem in the center. And then around that, are smaller patches with all of the years that your club has had the Melvin Jones Fellowship. And so then I would read the, all the years in order. Um, and then I would have to get closer to read some of the patches, but like there's some that have like sunshine. That's so cool. And some have lions, like Lioness Club sponsor, um, campaign for sight, 25 years. Uh, there's journey for sight, Kansas lions. Um, so then I would get closer and describe like the detail on some of those. Thank you. Yeah. One, of the, one of the more interesting ones I've heard was the ballet. Because you oh, don't yeah. hear yeah. anybody talking. They just have great music, which which somebody's blind can enjoy their music. But uh, they'd sit back there and watch it and describe it through the things like, okay, here comes a beautiful woman in a little dr <laughs> tiny dress. Okay, <laughs> coming from the other side is a guy in <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, and so one of the things that um, we train and that Kim helps with as well when we have volunteers is we have this posted in all of our studios and materials is that we are this, the eye in description or even when you're reading. It's hard to be emphatic and to be interesting to listen to without conveying your personal opinion. Um, especially during election years, because there's a lot of, you know, uh, right, and especially, you know, when we have live readers, and it's usually two people that go back and forth, because it's hard to read out loud for an hour or two, and so we'll go back and forth so you can rest your voice and get a drink, and then the other person picks up, and sometimes you can tell that one is, you know, pretty far on this side, and one's pretty far on this side, and they're trying really hard to read together, but... That should happen. It should be, 
you know, interesting and you speak with inflection and somebody you want to listen to because that's the difference is the human voice and that connection and the it's oh, yeah. easier to talk than, you know, mm-hmm. listening to a, a computer read it to you. So, um, so like we would say that they're smiling, not that they're happy. Um, and so when you start working there or volunteering there, you have to do an audition. So there's a hundred word pronunciation quiz. And then, um, and I can tell you that there are words that I can tell you exactly what they mean and I can use them in a sentence, but I had never actually said them out loud before just because I read a lot. Like obsequious, that sounds like a fake word. My whole life I said obsequious. Oh, but it is obsequious. I missed that on my. <laughs> I missed Goobazaw. Goobazaw. <laughs> Way back when, when I auditioned, Goobazaw was playing for the Royals. Oh, Came yeah. up and it was like Gooby, uh, you know, they had me do yeah. it in Braille. Yeah. yeah, they grilled my audition. I had to sit there cold and read it. Hmm. Yeah, we have volunteers that do, like, like Royals players, Chiefs players, KU players, high school players that have name, like, phonetic pronunciations and, oh, yeah. you know, common things like that. Um, in the Lawrence paper, one of the the sheriff's officer spokespersons, last name is Demosic, but it oh. looks like Dimachek. And so we have a thing up there that says... You know, that this is how you pronounce this when you're reading it. So, um, but yeah, it's, I had to um, read an obituary for my audition. Oh my and it was a visiting distinguished professor at KU had passed away, and he was from China. So his mm-hmm. name was about 17 letters long, and it was all like, you know, X-I-A-N-G-A-I, like mm-hmm. all these vowels. I had no idea how to say it. And, um, and then it says, you know, and then he survived by and lists all these family member names. <laughs> and I'm like, and you're nervous, it's an interview, you know, and I was like, ah. Oh. So I just said, I'm going to spell it and I'm going to say it this way. And I'm sorry if that's incorrect. And, and then I had to describe a photo and it was, you know, a lady on a bicycle and she had flowers in the basket on the bike. And you know, she's facing to the right with a smile on her face. And, you know, like, so you describe the color and the placement on the page and those kinds of things. Any other questions? Okay, thank you.